Everybody loves a good story. I certainly do. And when I'm teaching an in-person class, I love to hear new stories. And now that we're on digital, I thought I would collect them and I would make inspirational stories as well as cautionary stories, cautionary tale stories, don't be that person story, all so that we can learn from each other in a hope to inspire you not to be that person. So cautionary tale, don't be that person. Brokering the deal, that deal for anybody other than yourself. What that means is if you want to engage, you want a conversation, you want to kiss somebody, you want to have sex with them, you want them to know that you find them attractive. If you want to do that, then you need to get yourself over to wherever that person is and let them know. The mistake is asking your partner, hey, go over there and see if you can, you know, work it out and let them know that I want. Don't do that. Neither ask your partner to do that for you, nor be the overzealous partner that says, oh, I know you like that person. I know you do. Here, I'll just go set it up for you. I'm telling you, if you are in this community, if you are at one of these events, your safest best bet is for you to have your own voice and your own choice. When you go through the nail biting and the uh-oh and the walking across the room to talk to that person that you're interested in, don't look now, but that's a growth gate and you don't want to pass it. Find the courage to speak on your own behalf. Find the courage to represent yourself because when you do, you're going to set the tone. You're going to really find out if you really do want to engage with that person because of the way they're engaging with you. And the deal that you negotiate is going to be your deal with that person. It'll be crystal clear. When you put a third person in there to negotiate a deal for you, you're looking for drama, misunderstandings, and you're missing a really big piece of your own personal growth. And that is to find the courage and the voice to create what it is that you want. Really important. This saves on drama between the two people, you and the person or other persons that you're working with, misunderstanding, and it will save a ton of drama, you with your partner. He or she may have set up X and you wanted Y. He or she may have left out some details and you got the short end of that stick because why? Because your voice wasn't involved. Not representing your own self in whatever arrangement you want to make is a powder keg of drama on a lot of different levels. So don't be that person. Don't be that person who has too much drama. It's hard to do, believe me, it's hard to do, especially when you've toppled the apple cart, but instability equals drama. And man, if you get too much of that in your reputation, people are not going to want you to come to their events. It looks like this. Sometimes when you get too intoxicated or whatever substance you might be on, too much where you can't say yes or no also pretty much leads to possibly reading the facts wrong, right? And when you read the facts wrong and spin out in jealousy, drama, it's just like a forest fire, just, just starts right now. So the cautionary tale here is take care of yourself emotionally. If you can't handle too much substance because it makes you crazy or it makes you super hyper jealous or whatever your thing is, make sure to take care of your stability. 
because drama is like a cancer and nobody wants to be around that. Jealousy, substance, and here's the last thing. Lost. Don't go too long without checking in with who you came with because a lost partner, partner, a partner who can't find their partner is really a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing to witness and it's a difficult thing to be that partner. So manage your stability and you'll manage your drama. Don't be that person out of control. Our next one is don't be that overbearing, controlling partner that sounds like, like ugh, it even feels that way too. I've, I've been on the other end of this one more than once. What do you mean we're not playing? We have paid to be here. We have been here. We, we, we're playing or we're just stupid if we're not. We have to play, right? All of that coercion, push, 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 you have to. Ugh, don't be that partner. Because this is about consent. We'll, we'll unwrap that in the class, but this is about consent. This is about you wanting to do something because you're a grown up now and you don't have to do what you don't want to do. You being clear with what you, with your yes, you being clear with your no, and you understanding that even though you may have paid a lot of money to be there, maybe the win is to just watch people having sex, learning a lot, by the way. Maybe the win is to just engage with your partner, whispering, what do you see? What do you like? Because I guarantee you, if you do an amount of that at your event, <laughs> you could be eaten off that for months in your fantasy play. So don't be the asshole that pushes your partner into doing something they don't want to do. You get your voice and your partner gets their voice. And if for whatever reason, somebody's not down with engaging sexually, then the next question ought to be, well, okay, what can we do then? What can we do and find what you can do and find where the yeses are and enjoy the event, enjoy the evening and keep your relationship intact. So don't be that over controlling, overbearing partner. Okay, another one. Don't be the cheerleader instigator at a sex scene. If you haven't been invited to be the cheerleader or instigator, nobody needs you up in the grill. Just because people are engaging sexually in front of you does not mean that you have license to come over and tell them what they should or should not be doing. Don't be that person. If they've invited you to coach, Perfect. But if they haven't, quiet on the set, shut the fuck up. It's a maturity issue. Honestly, it's a maturity issue. Don't be that person, even in your exuberance. And the last one is another maturity issue. How about the overzealous person who wants to jump in? to a sex scene. So they're right up close with all of their physiology, just waiting, just waiting, just waiting, just waiting, just waiting to be tapped in so that they can tap in. Don't be that person. Don't be the person who stalks. Don't be the person who gives the stink eye, like, or the puppy dog eye. <laughs> whatever the thing is, right? <laughs> Coercion. If somebody has not given you a green light, a hell yes, as you're going to learn in this class, if they haven't given you a hell yes, 
smile and find somebody who will. Moping, stalking, being too close, don't be that person because I guarantee you, you won't get invited back. The word will get out and it'll be your reputation. Cautionary tales. Cautionary tales. Keep your own eyes open when you get out into the world. Watch for great behavior, modeling behavior. My gosh, watch for people who are doing it right. And keep an eyebrow out for those people who aren't. You can learn a lot about engaging with them sexually from their non-sexual behavior. And we just want everybody to have a whole lot of fun and a lot less drama.